Hello everyone. Uh, in this tutorial we'll be going over how to make a 3D mesh and converting it to open foam format. Um, so here we'll start with the 2D mesh, uh, 2D square mesh as we've done in the previous tutorials. Um, I won't redo it. Um, it's just here. You can refer to the previous tutorials to see how to do it. So this is what it currently looks like in Gmesh. So it's just a simple 2D mesh. Now we're going to make a 3D mesh by extruding this mesh into a cube. So you do that by by the extrude command in Gmesh. So here's the extrude command and I set it equal to a return array. You always define arrays by these little brackets. I set it equal to a return array because new surfaces like the sides and the front will be created and you can access the IDs of these surfaces by by this array, by storing it in this array. So, so here we have um, extrude in the z direction, uh, the surface with identifier 10, um, and we use box dim over grid size layers, which is what we've defined up here, to be consistent with the 2D square mesh grid size. So we have a perfect cube mesh, and then we use recombine so that the extruded cells, rather than being half half cube cells because remember Gmesh triangularizes things by default we can have perfect cubes with uh, this uh, recombine command so let's see how that pans out so <coughs> oh, uh, maybe I forgot to say it. yes so you can see we've made a cube now it's just been extruded in the Z direction we press 3d we can see the mesh it's a nice perfect cube mesh and now for open foam, we need to define the surfaces. So this might be like a wind tunnel or something in a real simulation. And so you need to define the uh, boundary conditions, and open foam needs to know the names of those surfaces. So you need to know the front and back. You need to name the front and back and top, side, etc., so that open foam can recognize it. And you can assign boundary conditions in the open foam files. So we'll do that by using the physical surface command. So you give it a name, and then you um, put the identifier. So this was the original surface which from which we extruded. So we'll call that the back. And we'll call the front the extruded surface. And as I said before, that's stored in the this array that we've set it equal to. Uh, the extrude command actually does can do a lot of things in Gmesh. You can do rotational extrusions, rotation plus translation extrusions. Uh, refer to the Gmesh reference manual on the main Gmesh website uh, for tutorial scripts and uh, details on how to use those. So um, the uh, the new surf the new entities are stored in a certain order. So and the zeroth entry is this is detailed on the reference manual on the Gmesh website. But on the zeroth entry is the new surface uh, from which the uh, original surface was extruded, and the ID one is the volume, the new volume that was created, and the following IDs are the sides, side surfaces, and those go in order of the line loop you made to make that surface. So yeah, we, we name the bottom, right, top, left, and for the volume you assign a, an ID, make sure it doesn't coincide with an already used ID. Um, remember when you extrude you create new, uh, new entities so the IDs will be used up, so the, the current ID will be higher than, than 10. Um, it'll, so I just use 100 to be safely above that limit. And as you can see it's in the first, or the one-th entry. Um, of new en of new entities, so here we have all our things defined, and it should be ready to convert to open foam format. So let me just show you. You can confirm that your services were named correctly by by going to tools and visibility, and you can see your surface is named here and your volume. So if you just uh, click apply on the volume you can see that that's there back that was the original surface that's correct front the new surface bottom right top and left so you can see
can see that our surfaces are correctly referenced. So with that, we'll be making, we'll be exporting this mesh to a text file using the com using command line. So let's do that. So um, I've created a script here called convert, and this writes out your um, mesh to a text file. Um, this is your Jamesh file, the dimension, it's going to be three, uh, and the output name, which is test, will be test.mesh. And then this is the open, built-in open foam converter called Jamesh to foam. You reference the outputted uh, mesh text file, and you can also specify the case. So in, in this case, um, we'll be using an empty dummy case. It doesn't actually, it has the same folder structure as a real open foam case, but there's not really actually much in it. Um, <coughs> so let's go ahead and do that. So let's do jvish main.geo, three dimensions, and output test.mesh. So you can see it successfully wrote out the mesh. And now we can use the jvish to foam conversion utility. This is our mesh that we just wrote out, and the case file will be our dummy case. So, so it was successfully converted. Um, sometimes you'll get warnings. Um, that depends on what boundary conditions you've defined and stuff, so it, it may or may not be significant uh, depending on how you set up your mesh, but in this case it's not very significant, um, and it may have something to do with the fact that we're doing a completely empty dummy case. But uh, yeah, so the conversion was successful. And now you can uh, <coughs> manipulate your mesh within the open foam uh, case files. So you can see the poly mesh was created here. And this is all the specifications that that is part of the open foam format. And yeah, and that's all there is to it to take a 3D mesh from Jamesh into open foam. Thanks for watching and happy foaming.